welcome back to the channel. You know on this channel we talk everything nursing, medicine and university related and um, today we are going to talk about resilience in nursing. Um, this is a quite an important topic um, especially for all the things that are happening um, recently in nursing where we are having nursing strikes we're having nursing being struck off the register for poor behavior and we are having nurses on tiktok who are disrespecting patients and um, saying things that breaks patients confidentiality and so i thought it would be an interesting topic to delve deep into um just being resilient in your nursing career. If, depending on your age, you're hoping that your career will last a lifetime, a span of at least 40 years, and during that time, you will grow and you will change. Not only will you become a better nurse, you will also become a different person in your life. You might start off with very young children or no children at all, and then you have children, you you know you've gotten married you've gotten a divorce and life changes and life turn the wheel of time turns and it's important that we are resilient if we are not resilient then we will suffer nursing burnout so for today we're going to say um we're going to talk about what is resilience how does it affect us as an individual and how do we become resilient? Because that's the most important thing, is how do we actually become resilient? Now, resilience means knowing how to cope in spite of things like setbacks, barriers, or even limited resources. Um, resilience is tend to be measurement of how much you want something and how willing you are and able to overcome obstacles to get the thing that you want. So it might be that you are in university to become a nurse and then you will think of how will I finish my nursing degree? You know, what are the step backs? It could be childcare. It could also be that um, you have housing issues or your family issues. And how do we get around these barriers these setbacks, in spite of everything, how do we come out victorious at the end? It really has to do, when you think of um, resilience, a lot of your resilience has to do with your emotional strength. And it also has to do with your capacity to recover quickly from difficult and tough situations. Now that's a key thing because that is linked with your mental health. Not only your physical health, but with your mental health. And if your mental well-being is not good, then you'll find that you're not as resilient as you'd hope to be. Um, let's look at a few things that nurses themselves say about resilience. So we know that being resilient is to do with overcoming challenges. So one nurse says, nursing resilience training is necessary investment, especially in the times we are going through. We are going through critical times. I need resilient to protect one of our most valuable resources in the country, which is our nursing staff. I am a part of that nursing staff and it's important that I protect myself. It's important that I help to build resilience in my team members, but not only my team members, but also in my patients. Um, as when the patients are resilient as well, when I help my patients to become resilient, then I in turn am also resilient. So I help my patients with their mental health and they in turn help me to be a better nurse to them. Another nurse says, these rapidly changing circumstances have put hospital systems in a tough place. Many are focusing all their energy on dealing with the crisis at hand, rather than addressing the deteriorating mental and emotional health of their nursing staff. So that's from another nurse who feels that it's the case that, you know, um, 
employers are not helping nurses to be resilient. So that's another thing to think about when you think about nursing resilience. How can you work with your employer to become more resilient? Are you accessing training? Are you, um, you know, telling your employer when you are suffering from stress and burnout? Are you taking required time off? Are you working too many hours? These are the sort of questions that you would ask yourself. Am I working too many hours? Am I not taking enough time off? So let's talk about the type of resilience. So we've seen where nurses have said when they strengthen their patients to be resilient, then they become more resilient. When employees work with them to be resilient, then they in turn become more resilient. And also when they work together with their team members, they become resilient. Let's talk about types of resilience. There's three types of resilience that we're going to discuss. This is not exhaustive of resilience. However, for this video, we are going to delve deep into three types of resilience, natural resilience, adaptive resilience, and restored resilience. So natural resilience, this is the resilience you're born with. And that's the resilience that comes naturally to you. So where for myself, I might not react to certain things, other people might. That's your personality. This is your human nature. This is your life force that you have. Sometimes it works well for you and other times not so well. It means that you might have to teach and train yourself to not, um, you might have to teach and train yourself to suppress your natural born instincts that will make you react to certain things. Let's talk about adaptive resilience. Adaptive, resili adaptive resilience, this could also be called trial by fire. And we say trial by fire because this occurs when challenging circumstances force you to learn to change and adapt. Don't be afraid of this. Challenging circumstances help you to grow stronger help you to be a better person, help you to be more reflective, help you to be a better team member, also help you to be a better employee. So never back down from a trial by fire. And finally, let's talk about restored resilience. This is also known as learned resilience. And this is the type of resilience that we teach in university, that we teach on the ward. And this learned resilience is where you learn techniques to build your resilience. There's, doing this can help you to deal with the past, the present, future traumas, and you will come out a healthier and happier person. Now, there's some of us who are born inherently with low resilience. When resilience is low, you may feel depressed, you may feel victimized, you may be demoralized, you might feel hopeless, just disconnected from everything, you're feeling tired, fatigued, just stressed out all the time, and you might think, I can't continue, I'm finding it very difficult to, con to continue. At this time, it is important that we try to protect ourselves, to reinforce our resilience, and key ways that we can do that is by accessing mental health services, Accessing mental health services does not mean that you have a mental health illness. It means that at this point in time, you're feeling low, you're feeling a bit depressed, and you need the help of others to get you back on your feet. So never be afraid of accessing um, mental health services when you are feeling low in your resilience. It could mean that you can also speak to family members, your husband, your boyfriend, your cousins, aunties, uncles, you know, do utilize your surrounding family members. Now, a lot of times nurses say they find cracks in the foundation of their working system that undermine their resilience, that can break them. If this is the case for you, then obviously you need to speak to the nurse and staff, speak to the manager, you know, <clears throat> speak to the sister in charge, speak to your colleagues, 
even speak to someone if you're a nursing student speak to other nursing students you might find that you're not the only one who's going through that trauma you're not the only one who's had that experience when you realize that other people are having the same experience or similar experience then it doesn't feel so much like woe is me it doesn't feel so much like you're the only one who's going through this difficult situation sometimes it's very hard as nursing can be a fast-paced environment it can be a, an environment that things are moving so fast you don't get time to have your tea break time to just take a minute to breathe you know you've got patients who are asking questions you've got doctors coming and asking questions you've got the physio the ot you have other staff, other nursing staff who are asking questions and can take you some time to recover. This can stop you and um, compromise your delivery of care. So it's really important that when you're feeling like this, that you take a step back. Now let's talk about the characters of a resilient nurse. Now this is important because if you find you don't have these characters, then you are going to spend time to build these characters. So good teamwork and working well with others, being aware of when to take a break and really, really important, being aware of when rest is needed. And what this means is you would not do seven nights on your ward and then go and do four days on another ward or you won't take your annual leave and work during that time. You really need downtime as a nurse. You need time to think, you need time to breathe. You need time to just work out the kinks in your brain. So it's really important that you work well with your team and with others, that you're, for, you're aware of when to take breaks and that you're getting your rest. Now, Walt Disney, <laughs> everyone knows Disney, um, we watch their films, but Walt Disney says, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. So to become resilient, look in yourself, be self-reflective, quit pointing the finger at others. Think about yourself. What can I do to make me better? Now, some of the, the words that you can think of when you think of resilience in nursing, it's Attitude for life, keep focused, I can do this. Be aware of your emotional needs, be a good communicator, control yourself. Your response to circumstances will um, break you down if you react to everything. After a while, it will take its toll. Get your social support and network, your friends, your family, your team members, you know, other students, other staff. Surround yourself with these people. Have a sense of humor. If you don't have anything, you must be able to laugh at yourself, laugh at your patients, laugh at um, your colleagues, laugh at your lecturer, laugh at whomever. You must be able to just have a laugh. Now, I want you to also believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, you become more confident your self-esteem goes up and that means that your resilience will go up. Think about how can I problem solve? You need the ability to problem solve. This will help you to be adaptable and flexible. And as a nurse, you must be adaptable and flexible. And in everything, be optimistic. Don't focus on what you're not good at. Focus on your strengths. Focus on the things that you're really good at but have some sense of humor, always smile, always think it's brighter, the sun will come out tomorrow. You know, always think in that way that the sun will come out tomorrow. So how can you improve your strength and resilience? Find a sense of purpose in your life. Identify what matters to you and go for it. It might be that it might be work that matters to you, it might be family, it might be friends, it might be something else, it might be painting and decorating, whatever it is, find your sense of purpose in life and stick with your sense of purpose. Build positive beliefs in your ability. Do not talk yourself down when you haven't done a good job. Say to yourself, I can do better next time. 
this means that you're going to employ positive thinking. Positive thinking has a wonderful impact on one's mental health. Once again, we're going to talk about your social network. Develop a strong, tough social network that when you fall, they're there to pick you up. Now, I want you to embrace change. Change brings opportunity. I know a lot of times when there's changes, everybody sighs, ah, not again, another change. But working in health, there's always changes. There's always change to best practice. There's always change to the policies and the protocols and all the different things. So you must be, you must embrace change. Be optimistic. I know it's never easy to be optimistic all the time, but where you feel or okay, can falling down on that optimism, pick yourself up. Think of ways to improve your optimism. Nurture yourself. Get that facial. Get your nails done. That mani, that pedi. You know, enjoy your life. Go on a night out. Just take some time for yourself. Read a book. Whatever it is, do things that make you feel good. Take time to be with yourself. It might just be sitting on your couch with your children. In your mind, develop a problem-solving skill. Try to stay focused. If there's an issue, stay focused and sort out that issue. In everything that you're doing, you must have an established goal. Do a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. Have established goals and have a way of achieving those goals. One thing that I've employed in that area is journaling. So I will write in my journal, in 2028, I hope to be here. And I will set out a way of how I'm going to reach that goal. Take action. Find a solution. Just do it. You know, don't put things off. I've got something to do. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Don't do that. Don't put things off. Keep working at your skill. Every day in your life is a school day. Every single day you are learning something. It doesn't have to be anything big, but at least you are learning. And to summarize everything that I've said, look after your health physically and mentally because you as an individual, you matter. Other people matter, but you matter as well. And I think in nursing, we forget that we matter. Mahatma Gandhi says, strength does not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. So that's a strong will. So not your physical will, your mental will. So remember in nursing, it's not only physical, it's also mental. So that's all I have for you today when it comes to resilience in nursing. If you have any questions, um, please leave your questions down below. Also, we are doing a giveaway. So please leave your comments down below. Give us an idea of how you've become resilient or if you feel that you're not resilient enough, what areas you'd like to work on or, you know, just what makes you happy, what makes you carry on every day. So um, share those with us in the comments and the giveaway will be um, on Wednesday and we will take names from the comment section for the giveaway. Have a good day.